Guys, check out the perfect weather. It's days like this where you need ND filters. And in today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to use ND filters on your action tree. What's up fam, Rahim here and welcome to another episode. Now actually, I'm out today to film some stuff and I'm using the DJI Osmo Action 3. But the day is kind of bright and that's where I need to uh, adjust it to get the perfect exposure and that's why I'm going to bring you along on how I set up the ND filters. Right? Why use ND filters? Why not just record in auto exposure and that's going to get the job done, right? If you don't put on ND filters, the exposure is still going to be correct. It's just that the shutter is going to be very fast which e will equate to a footage that is going to seem rigid. A bit of theory here about exposure. There are three things that make it up, right? Which is your ISO, aperture and then there's your shutter speed. Your ISO, for my settings, I'd want it as highest quality and as least sensitive in such a bright day setting, right? So it's going to be 100. Now then, my aperture, I can't set. It is fixed in the lens of the uh, action tree. So I'm going to move on then to my shutter, which I want ideally in the perfect natural looking setting is going to be a 30 fps with a shutter of 1 out of 60th of a second. Okay, the reason for that now there's a lot got to do with the 180 degree shutter rule, which is I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to learn more. All right, here's some footage of leaving the cam in auto exposure settings. Now you can see that the image is kind of rigid, and especially when I'm waving my arms, right, it doesn't look natural. So, in order to give it a more natural look, I have to slow down the shutter a bit. And here's a shot of the correct exposure, correct shutter settings with the use of an ND filter. Okay, first stop is where you'd want to actually remove the existing uh, lens filter. You will then go to camera settings where you choose manual settings, right? So, checking out the manual settings is currently overexposed, okay? Because I have a uh, frame rate of 30 fps and that means I'm gonna use 1 out of 60th of a second. If I were to put my ISO at lowest of 100, right? The image is gonna be overexposed. I have here an exposure of positive 2.7 right and that is superbly overexposed there is nothing much that you can recover from the image because there's a lot of white even if you do it try to recover in post-processing it's already dead pixels right so what you want to get here is a neutral exposure of zero or somewhere close to zero that's where i will actually run through my different filters all right for the camera experts don't bash me i know there are calculations to know which nd filter you want to use but i'm just here to guide those that are on the field want to make quick changes and never needing to think about all these numbers right so i'll start off with nd8 right? i'll actually put it in front of the camera it shows me a positive 1.7 exposure so i feel that okay nd8 is not enough i'm gonna change over and swap out to nd16 okay here's nd16 covering the front okay i have a positive 0.3 exposure shown here um, that's basically just slightly overexposed uh, would i want to keep it i could or i could also change over and let's try nd 32 just for argument's sake okay nd 32 in i have an exposure of negative 0 0.7 now that's an under exposure but i'm going to stick with this because um, i know that i i can preserve the sky and areas in the shade i can always brighten it in post okay that is settled i'm just going to screw this on okay so while that's happening i'm just going to share with you also a tip you got the correct exposure for the surrounding but the day isn't always going to be this bright and maybe within an hour because it's being a it being a cloudy day it may change right in the next few minutes right so that's where you may want to instead of having a fixed iso you may want to have a re range of iso which for me is that it, there are auto iso settings of 100 to maybe up to 3200 3200 should be enough right so uh, why 3200 because i feel that the quality up to 3200 of the image is still going to be okay while beyond that it's going to be very noisy why would i even want to raise this because i'm taking shots of my car in the shade and that's where it may be a bit too dark so yeah this kind of settings would help me out all right guys it's getting hot now let's summarize take it that ND filters are like shades for your camera. For example, if you have the perfect ISO setting, a perfect exposure setting in mind, right? That's where you'd want to have like, for myself, I have ISO 100 in mind and then I also have the shutter of 1 out of 60th of a second because I am using 30 FPS recording. I am not intending to do slow-mo with it, right? By the way, if you're intending to do slow-mo shots, 
60 fps is going to be a shutter of 1 out of 1 20th and then if you're doing 120 fps slow mo then it's going to be 1 out of 240th or 250th of a second so 30 fps 180 degree shutter rule equals to the shutter speed of a 1 out of 30th eh, 1 out of 60th of a second so i've got all those settings but because it's such a bright day it mix um, the image right uh, overexposed the footage is going to be superbly overexposed dead pixels everywhere that you cannot recover and that's where you will then put on ND filters run through them it's okay don't need to calculate also can all right just run through them 8 16 32 and find the suitable one that you want to use right and if you think that like today it is a cloudy day that the the exposure is going to keep changing then you may also want to use a range of ISO change it to auto and then use 100 to maybe 3200 good enough right usually I use that for scenes that are ever changing exposure right where I may be out in the bright area and then suddenly I go under the shade and that's where I still want to maintain the exposure of myself and so I put it on auto ISO okay so this is just a basics of getting you into using ND filters it's not meant to really get in depth all right um, if you want to see more of that do let me know in the description and probably I'll make that episode too but right now it's just a basics for you to get started right by the way I'm using freewell ND filters now they include up to not only 64 but also ND 1000 and also an additional UV filter now don't underestimate UV filters all my lenses have at least a UV filter on because they will be the first line of defense in case uh, you receive any bumps scratches or even uh, things thrown at it right it at least won't hit the lens itself it will hit the uv filter first you can just change it out later if you want to know more about this kit and other products in their freeware lineup go and check out the link in the description else i'm gonna wrap it up right here guys it's a tgif right go meet up with your friends family and loved ones with that pilots as always i'll see you in the skies peace